Well, hi, everyone. Michael Faust here. Gr great to have you on this Zoom today. This is our enhanced session, which is fundamentally about building your knowledge base of the limitless opportunity and, uh, and blockchain sports, obviously. So today I'm working on the assumption that uh, you're here to learn and that you already are a member or actually participant in blockchain sports. So let's get into it. Um, today, I want to really just work on the areas of uh, of knowledge base that I feel we're really going to get the most out of this. And if you can make sure you're unmuted, that'd be great. So let's just... Okay, so let me just... Okay. So I want to highlight some things on this presentation that I've been using to really emphasize this. Sometimes when we talk to people, they find it hard to conceptualize what we're talking about. So this particular slide you see on your screen is basically designed to help you actually communicate to people what this is. And particularly to see it as a crazy idea. I was sharing last night on my Zoom how I was in Almaty, uh, I'm in Kazakhstan back in 2007. And I was it was part of an actually worldwide tour. I was doing, doing presentations and, and training. Never been to Kazakhstan before. And I was looked after by some hosts and a translator. I had a translator because they spoke Russian and I didn't speak Russian. And we went out to a nightclub on our last night. They wanted to entertain me and uh, we you know, had a great time dancing and having fun till about three in the morning and then decided we needed to go the next day to Kazakhstan, needed to get home to the hotel. So I said, look, let's get a taxi. And they said, basically, um, there are no taxis. And I said, well, okay, how do we get home? Because they didn't have a car at the time, as I understood, and had a few drinks, wasn't wise to be driving home. She said, and our translator just walked out onto the street and actually hailed down the nearest car and negotiated a price to drive us back to the hotel from the club. This is back in 2007. Here I am in a strange country, never been to before, with a bunch of strangers, not really strangers, I only been with them that last few days, hopping into a stranger's car, going back to my hotel at three o'clock in the morning. Now, I don't think I actually told uh, my partner at, at the time about this because I was worried what they would think of my, if I was my mental well-being to hop into a stranger's car. Sound like an absolutely ridiculously crazy idea back in 2007. Move forward to 2024. And you probably have hopped in an Uber um, or a Grab or a Lyft or whatever, uh, one of those apps that you use, and you do it all the time now. You hop in a stranger's car who basically takes you to where you want to go. And the disruptive part of it is that the guys who come up with that model don't have to own any taxis. Don't have to actually maintain the car. Don't pay insurances. Don't pay the actual registration to, to drive. The, the drivers are responsible using their own cars for all the up, up, upkeep on that car. And you, to, and you can now go and actually get finance from a bank to finance a car to become an Uber driver. So the banks now also see that as a, actually a legitimate model. But thinking back to 2007, when I hopped in that car, this was pre-Uber, pre-even before Uber was an idea. In Kazakhstan, out of all places, I, you know, before I went on this, this tour, I didn't, I had heard of some of the Stans, you know, the Uzbekistan, the Kazakhstan, the Kazakhstan, the whatever Stan it was, but I didn't know where they really were in the world. So here in this very obscure part of the world, we're sort of the <laughs> one of the earlier. Ubers before they became an Uber. And now, you know, Uber's a $160 billion company. And uh, with Grab, who's very big here in Asia, is like, again, another multi-billion dollar company. And they've diversified. 
into many different areas. So when we're talking to people, you can make them feel comfortable and tell the story that it may seem really strange to be talking about blockchain technology, uh, you know, um, cryptocurrency, e digital web, web point three ecosystem, you know, the sports industry and all that. But remember, the people who are investing early, the actual venture capitalists who got into investing into Uber, Airbnb, Spotify, Netflix, all these all these startups, WhatsApp, the list goes on. There's so many tech companies that all began with people who just were prepared to back a crazy idea. The difference is that disruptive technologies are not so much a new thing. You know, the four companies you see on your screen have a, have a combined valuation over 500 billion dollars half a trillion and it's not so crazy now when we talk about this but the reality is that the vast majority probably 99.999 percent of people didn't hear about these things until they were mainstream and probably until they went public and we didn't get those early adopter opportunities so that's what we're talking about here. This is a disruptive technology. And we are not going to get a known rate of return in a sense. It's not, it's not like that. It's not an investment. It is an investment-like opportunity where you're getting in in this founder's phase. But it's not where you put funds into a, like a, an investment fund and you're going to be guaranteed an outcome. It's very important to get people to understand that this is a opportunity to earn digital and in real life rewards. However, what that'll be is relatively unknown. Now we, in my, one of my sessions last week, I did explain how the tokens that are minted, you, you get, you get some sort of known, relatively known outcome and things like that. But this slide is more about actually positioning this opportunity. And the fact that we've got a narrow window, we've got less than four months, folks. 16th of August is the last day that anybody will ever be able to partake in this founder's face. So I thought I'd start with that today as a really good story that you can communicate with other people who may find it hard to conceptualize. This particular slide talks about the fact that just like this little app with Uber or Airbnb or Spotify with music or Netflix with streaming media, you know, it was technology, technology meeting a existing business with real infrastructure and that little bit of technology just tweaked it a little bit and created billions and billions of dollars worth of business. This slide is focused on the fact that we are a startup, but not necessarily a startup. There is 18 months of development that's already gone in with $30 million dollars. And the phase that we're focusing on is this founder's phase. And we're talking to somebody brand new today. You can tell them that we're already two months in and we have only four months. That's not a, that's not putting pressure on somebody. That's just stating the, the, the actual facts of this. And every time they delay their decision, they are potentially having a higher cost of actual participation in this. So we're in a founder's phase. It's not a crowdfund. It's not an investment. It's just a founder's period where we get an opportunity to get in early and enjoy the benefits, but with a go live September 1. And highlighting that there is already things being developed. I mean, our blockchain ecosystem, our, our blockchain itself is not that far from going into the testing environment in preparation for going live on September 1. And I had a, a privilege of having a private call this on Sunday with uh, Andre, the architect behind the blockchain and, uh, and Artem, who's the CEO of the blockchain sports. And just going through the actual tokenomics and understanding more of the basic concepts. And I will do a session on this in the, in the, in the, in one of our coming Zooms to break it down to simple language, but 
the technology platform, even if you don't understand what Web3 and blockchain and all stuff is, it's not about that. It's just you understanding technology has already disrupted major industries. And that's what we're doing here. And, and the infrastructure is already well developed. I mean, there's over a thousand people involved just on the blockchain sports team, 300 plus blockchain developers, hundreds of other developers in Web 3.0. Media people, you know, you know, you see the quality of the of the, of the actual materials, and the reason I'm highlighting this is because I'm trying to get across why, personally, my belief is so high, and why there is so much evidence out there to support that this is a really valid opportunity. Real infrastructure. If you go into the blockchain sports Telegram channel, which I'll quickly highlight tonight you'll see there's so much going on if real infrastructure being built. And the fact that the actual Brazilian government is already on board, well on board, donating over 500 football fields, you know, sports ministers are getting involved and other countries are definitely wanting to be involved. And FIFA's looking at this and, and streaming media companies like, as far as Netflix, who met with the founders last month, you know, because it's, it's really interesting how people still occasionally, not with me, but other people tell me that people say, oh, this can't be real. And there's nothing more real than when you're sitting down on the border with actually Netflix, when you've got government ministers and real infrastructure being built and all the other things that are happening right this. I think this is a, a very substantial one that, the intellectual property. I mean, in the end, we are a technology project. And that's what you're getting involved in. You're getting involved. I mean, Uber is a technology project. Yes, it's disrupting the taxi industry, but it's a technology project. The same as the actual Spotify with music, Netflix with streaming media, and Airbnb with accommodation, and, and WhatsApp with, with messaging. They're all technology applications. And the intellectual property of that technology, what gives us its value is really important. And if you've watched the interview um, with the, the company behind the intellectual property side of this, you'll see that they're just not just about giving you copyright protection and putting a valuation because people could say, well, anybody can come up with a valuation. Well, they happen to be the world's most prestigious company in that area. I mean, the Sanjar Group is the biggest and most successful and most well-known intellectual property company. But more than that, they have a very holistic approach that they just don't want to see companies get a valuation. They want to see companies being able to capitalize on it and actually monetize intellectual property. A lot of people have fantastic ideas. A lot of people get patents and copyright, but don't know how to turn that into a working business that creates asset value and cash flow. And that's the difference here too. You know, if you're going to put your money into this as a founder in this founder's face, you want to make sure that every effort is being made to extract every dollar of value out of this because that's how you're assured of the maximum upside. And that's what the Sanjar Group is all about. They're actually experts in not only intellectual property and copyright protection, but actually helping companies like the Coca-Colas, that's sort of the clients they have, monetize this. And if you watch the video that the interview with, uh, uh, with our, our Dr. Sanjar here, he talks about the fact that from a personal perspective, he really believes this is one of the, if not the most exciting project that he's seen in his uh, entire time in this field. And in fact, they're devoting a lot of their resources. And if you go to their website, you'll notice that the most that the the first featured project is blockchain sports. Now think about that. You're you've worked your entire life to establish yourself as the world's number one intellectual property group in in advising companies. And on your website, the first thing that any new client's going to go to and see is a big pop-up on the featured project, Blockchain Sports. Would you do that if you 
had any doubt about the potential? Why would you risk relationships with Coca-Cola and the apples of the world if you didn't see the Vagnus project? That's why I say to people, you know, you don't need to understand the technicalities. You've just got to use a little bit of common sense. I don't need to be an intellectual property ex uh, expert because I'm not to understand the value, but I can understand that someone of this caliber, if, if he says there's value in it, that makes sense. If Netflix is prepared to sit down and look at this and partner with this, that's adding everything as a layer of credibility, a layer of belief. Because the whole point is once you have bulletproof belief, then you're more happy to commit your money and you're certainly more happy to commit your actual reputation and the relationships that you have with other people. So all these things are building layers of belief. Again, another layer of belief that we have. I mean, I was in Dubai in February and we saw on stage all these football players. Now, I've said many times, I like watching sport. I've, I have I actually played a, a, a sport at top level when I was young. I love watching soccer, but I'm not someone who watches soccer every weekend. And I wouldn't know who these players are. But people who are into the sport know who these players are. But, but what stood out for me was that I saw people who were soccer fans. And when they saw these iconic legends on stage, putting their brand behind it. For me, I'm, not, I'm sort of looking at more common sense things. They've got a following of more than 750 million people that they've built up. Now, they've spent their entire careers building a reputation. And let's face it, if you're a, a player, that's your whole mission in life is to build your brand, build reputation, because that means more sponsorship deals. It means your value when you're being transferred to another club is going to go up because they know that they have a narrow window of time to capitalize on. And so any opportunity to increase their brand and their following is going to make them more valuable to the actual Nikes and the, um, um, the Adidas and the Pumas of the world and et cetera, et cetera. Now, just between the 40 are in Dubai and there's more signing up all the time. And they're not doing this just for the money. They've already got lots of money. They're doing this to give back. But their following is over 750 million people. Now, again, would you risk your reputation and your potential future revenue streams from actual royalties, et cetera? Even though they might not be playing anymore, so a lot of these legendary players are still getting um, endorsements and opportunities. And it might not even be for the sport. It might be the fact that the reputation they've built is going to make them have a seat on the board of companies where they get dividends or, or revenue shares or maybe other investment deals because of who they are. Again, they're putting their brand behind this. Then from another practical point of view, I'm a numbers person. I just look at it and say, if 1%, if they did a tweet or an Instagram post or a Facebook post or a YouTube post or a TikTok or whatever it is they use for their social channels, and that a 1% hit rate of 750 million people, that's that 750,000 people who are going to pay attention. That's a lot of people on a global audience as well. So again, that shows me that they can attract traction to this project and have eyeballs on it because the more eyeballs are on something, the more valuable it becomes. And again, the fact that we've got a multifaceted approach, this, this project is not reliant on the value of the token. It's not reliant on just the blockchain technology. It's not reliant on how good the nodes are. We have so many different areas of revenue stream. So when we're talking to people, that's the whole point. You, uh, the actual strength of the project is built on diversity. Now, why is it that Uber and Grab, and if you're in the Emirates, you'll see um, about a mental blank, but there's a, a very popular um, app, uh, Kareem, I think it's Kareem, in the UAE. 
that app in UAE, I was, I was flying on Emirates and they were saying that, you know, you can actually book your housekeeper, your babysitter, uh, your food, a, 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 as far as a ride share. I mean, uh, you could order an actual lemon if you, you know, you're actually making a salad and you forgot to have the lemon. You could order somebody to go to the the local 7-Eleven or the, the store and pick up the one lemon and bring it to you. You know, why are they doing this? Because they understand that the diversity of, of value and diversity of revenue streams is the secret to ultimately increasing the asset value and the potential cash flows. And again, you've got to look at this from a business person's eyes and not get too caught up on the hype, but be practical. What does a business person want? Why would they put their money into this? Because they want to have assets that grow in value. They want to basically have revenue streams. That's how you should be thinking. Get into the mindset that if you've got enough assets and enough cash flow coming from those assets, that's when you have true freedom. So this diversity is really to our benefit. And I always like to emphasize people because a lot of people see all this digital stuff. And you know, if you if if you do not come from that world, then you might understand it. But we've got real revenue streams. If you listen to the health and sports science videos with Dr. Eric, and I just put one up recently, I edited it down to a 16-minute video. You cannot listen to that video without being excited. You know, when people have listened to that, people have come to me and says, that's great. What about me? Am I able to access that technology? Because, you know, I actually turned 61 this year and I've always been healthy and I've always been relatively active. But for this next season of my life, my focus is on extension of my lifespan and improving the quality of my lifespan. And I'm sure that almost every person on this Zoom today feels the same way. But it's it's really invaluable to these athletes because as Dr. Eric explained, these health and sports sciences are helping to prevent injury, recover from injuries quicker, identify specific types of training and stretching and, and actually preventative measures that athletes can take to extend career and improve the quality of their career, which means money, because the longer you can play, the more money you can make. The easier you can identify from a club's perspective how to look after these players, the more potential revenue you're going to make. And that's what it's all about. So we have real, real revenue streams happening here from a diverse range of areas. And each one of these is multi-billion dollar categories. I like to highlight the people that we're building real infrastructure. And if you go to the, the blockchain uh, sports media telegram channel, you'll see almost on a daily basis updates and videos and, 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 and photos of real things happening. But real infrastructure, this is not some, oh, we're going to build us in the future. Uh, uh, there's actually three training facilities either already built or well under construction. And this is sort of the caliber. We're not talking about just building a football field. We're talking about education, accommodation, having families stay with the players. You know, the old model was take a, some young teenager, take him away from his family, send him across the world to, to some other part of the world. That's a huge trauma for a young teenager, particularly if you come from actually Brazil or Africa, and you're going to the UK or into Europe, it's a, it's a complete change of concept. But if you could create an, an environment where they, they go to school still, they've got their parents there with them, and it's a much more holistic approach to developing players, which means you've got players coming through who are in a much better mental and emotional state and more likely to reach their full potential. So again, the big picture of this is that they are really thinking about how can we disrupt? It's not just using, it's not just about blockchain and, and tokens 
and and nodes, but the holistic approach of how every aspect of this project is being developed. And of course, all the digital side of things. So I just wanted to uh, stop sharing there for a second. I wanted to share something else. So if you want to learn more, make sure you go to the blockchain sports media where you're going to get lots of visual reinforcement. For example, there was a massive, uh, the biggest blockchain event in the world. It happens in Dubai around this time of year. It just happened to coincide with the most, the worst weather of all in Dubai. But you've got people, you know, Bybit is the third biggest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, doing over $6 billion per day. And there's relationships going on there and lots of evidence. I'm all these spotlights on ambassadors who are legends, you know, who play for World Cup, play for their countries, play for some of the top clubs around the world, putting their brand behind this. Meetings in Dubai with the royal family that led to the assistance of the Dubai government in helping to set up a, a fund, an IT fund for financing innovative developments in sports, AI and game development and looking to attract over $7 billion in the first year of the fund's operation. Folks, if all these things aren't getting you to see the reality of what's going on, I don't know what else people need to see. There is so much evidence going on all the time. You know, looking at the media side of things, you know, so having their own media company to combine all the different areas of this project to make sure that the exposure of this project as it goes globally is uh, happening at the right level. So today, I just wanted to really focus on helping you to see that this is a real project that's going to generate real results and helping you understand how to communicate this to other people because you should want to share this with other people. I mean, I, I, it's something that I want to tell every single person I run into about because I don't want them to miss out because I'm also very aware that there is a narrow wind opportunity. We've got less than four months to go for you to get the word out. So I just, just, I just really um, encourage you, you know, plug into the YouTube, the official YouTube channel, the official Telegram channels, plug into the Zooms that are on, watch our Crowd Tycoon's uh, YouTube channel videos, and really just build your belief where you are absolutely bulletproof and you naturally want to share with anybody else. So I'd like to keep these sessions short and sweet. I hope you got a lot out of today's session. Uh, tomorrow is our mastery session where we'll be talking about how to master the art of building your own personal community. So I look forward to sharing more with you tomorrow. Different link, but same time. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Look forward to talking with you again very, very soon.